So right now it's about 82 degrees inside. One thing I've noticed is it's been consistent. Um, evening or day, it actually maintains this temperature. It seems to not fluctuate too much. Uh, whereas outside, obviously 90 degrees is actually still pretty cool. That thermometer outside is actually sitting on the wall too. So it's kind of getting the reflection or the, the radiant heat that the wall kind of stored through the evening the other night, or through the day. It does a pretty good job with regulating temperature. The insulation in the roof actually helps a lot. Um, that was something I've been curious about. It's still not totally sealed up, but we're making progress with that, and you can tell a big difference there. Uh, we'll see if we're going to need AC when we get over here. I'm hoping that we don't, but if we do, it's not really an issue. We have enough solar to actually do that. We just need to uh, make sure that we get a big enough battery bank um, to run that kind of stuff at night if we decide to do that. It gets cool enough here where you can actually open the windows at night or in the evening and have the cool breeze come through and just cool things down so maybe that will be an option as well. These walls do a really good job of regulating the temperature. The house is oriented south. It's not perfect but it's enough where this southern wall will actually get sunlight throughout the day and should release that at night during the winter. Most of the walls stay shaded during the summertime, we'll have to create some shade on the front wall just to kind of prevent that evening sun from really baking on it and heating the house up. One thing I found in my research with rammed earth is supposedly every inch of thickness that your wall is, it takes about an hour for um, outside temperatures to penetrate. Our, our walls are actually 24 inches thick, so it would take a full 24 hour cycle of just constant cold until that cold kind of reached the inside, um, and vice versa, it takes about 24 hours for, you know, if the sun was hitting the walls, that constant heat to actually reach um, the inside of the walls. R value resistance um, is a totally different measurement than what they call thermal mass. And they say that crammed earth walls actually provide good thermal mass, meaning that they store and retain the heat and the cool and release it at times that you need it. So they'll store the heat during the day and uh, release it at night when it's actually cold outside and vice versa. They'll store the cool of the night and release it during the day when you actually need it. So that's what makes rammed earth such a good building material. Um, a lot of people associate building with earth with poverty. Um, but if you actually start researching rammed earth, it's one of the, it's almost cost prohibitive unless you do it yourself or unless you have a lot of money. And we definitely don't have a lot of money, so our only option was to do it ourselves, which I probably wouldn't do it any other way, if, even if we had money. That's just, I'm, I'm dumb like that, I think. <laughs> You'll find that, you know, a lot of um, 
great architectural buildings in the Southwest were created with random earth and that, you know, it's not a cheap material if you actually pay to have it done. A lot of the value in rammed earth is in actual labor and uh, the time and the energy it takes to actually put it up. And, and I, I, that seems to be true with everything in the world that value is really consistent with how much time and energy anybody has actually put into um, that product. I've kind of an interesting story. When we first started to uh, ram our walls, we were just going to do a garden shed, so we were just doing it on the dirt. Basically, we wanted to get a feel for what it was like to ram and you know get our material mix right and all those things. So we did our first wall, and I kind of used more surface material, not necessarily organic material, but just had a lot of clay in it. Um, out here you have to dig down about two feet and then you start hitting real rocky, sandy, um, but also has a good mixture of clay in there. But that first wall, I was probably within the first two feet. Um, and long story short, it had a lot of clay in it. So I did a full wall, did eight feet. You know, it looked really cool, but I just wasn't happy with the material ratio so I just decided to push it down um, I figured it'd be pretty easy to push down because I just built it straight to the dirt with no foundation and again we were just trying to get a feel for it we're just going to do a little goofy garden shed and, and see how it went well I have a it's a case 570 which is a fairly good sized tractor I think it's like a 40 or 50 horsepower tractor um, uh, and it's got a low gear, which really you can, you can, it has a lot of power in that low gear. So I figured, well, I'll just push it down and we'll dig a little deeper and get some good material. I pulled the tractor up to it with the front bucket and went to push it down and it would not budge. Um, you know, two feet of wall thickness and then the eight feet tall, I, I I think I figured that in each wall section we probably have about 12 tons of material in in that section so when I went to push it down it wouldn't budge I actually had to basically floor it put the pedal to the metal to actually get enough power in that low gear to push it down so that was a cool <clears throat> little testament to the strength of just the raw earth sitting on the ground um, but then when you start tying other walls into it and you start putting your roof structure on and all those things it just gets stronger uh, I, I was in the construction industry for years before I um, actually moved out to Arizona back in coastal Georgia we um, used the Miami Dade building codes out there which are some of the most strict in the country because of you know the possibility of hurricanes and we'd build block walls reinforced block walls you know I had to abide by that Dade County building code which is basically Miami Florida um, they get hit with hurricanes a lot so most of the coastal regions of the country kind of adopt their building codes but I, I would venture to say that you know, reinforced block walls and, and with rebar and uh, tied into footings and all that would have come down easier than this wall that um, I actually had to push down with this rammed earth. So if there's any question as to the strength of rammed earth, I, I think that people are just misinformed, um, don't know. It's, it's one of those materials where people just have no clue. One thing I've come to realize is just because um, we adopt something as the standard does not necessarily mean that it's the best way to do things. Um, and you'll find a lot of people kind of pushing that agenda. I guess that's what you would call it is an agenda, but basically, you know, the safety sallies out there saying that you, 
know, it's not safe because it's not reinforced and this and that, which obviously rebar would probably make it stronger. None of my walls right now are reinforced and they're sitting on a rubble trench foundation. Um, they've been here for over a year now, not noticed any settling, um, any issues with strength. Um, but you do have to have a good foundation. Good foundation doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be concrete and rebar. Um, in fact, concrete and rebar, in my opinion, are a shortcut because people want to build houses quickly. Typically builders want to build houses quickly and efficiently. And rebar and concrete provide a uh, opportunity for a shortcut because it is a strong material but they'll uh, actually build on soils that aren't totally compacted or build in areas that really um, the soil isn't can't bear you know that kind of weight whereas when you're building with rammed earth the whole process is compacting so as I started to ram my walls I was ramming on top of my rubble trench foundation <laughs> Um, you rim the first layer and you're literally compacting all the way down through your trench into the native soil, the undisturbed soil. Um, and you do that all the way up, which, you know, I think you're probably looking at 12 different lifts of, of earth. So 12 times you're going across that with a compactor and I actually used a jumping jack, which is about a hundred pounds and, and puts a lot of force down. So that whole process is actually com compacting and, and creating even a better foundation for your wall. Like I say, I've, these uh, have been up for a year and we've been through a monsoon cycle and winter and freezing and all that with them and I have not noticed any bit of movement in these walls yet. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to using the land earth and I think that uh, as you research it, you'll, you'll probably find that, that that's the case as well. Thank you.